Hi, I'm Chris Cox. I stream on Twitch about four or five times a week under the name Chris L. Cox. And today I'm just going to go over how I use GeForce clothing in DAS Studio. I'm going to do this with the Genesis 8 figure. And um, if you're like me, you almost never use the default figure here. You almost always have some sort of figure that's morphed to some extent, such as I have here. So we're actually going to use this figure. Just for reference, so you can see she's a little more shapely, a little shorter. So we're going to just pop in our GeForce clothes first. First things first, I've got this far out outfit, which will be available for free on my Kofi page. There we are. There is our outfit. So I'm just going to take this. And make sure I have my figure selected here and just drop this on. There are GeForce. These pants are actually GeForce, um, except for the waistband. Kind of uh, the waistband doesn't have a dynamic strength set to zero, so it doesn't do with the simulation. The rest of it will. And similarly, the top, the cuffs, the waist, and the collar are set to zero, with the rest of it being set to be dynamic and as you can see there's your classic conforming figure under the breast so this is going to kind of a move it to a new pose b fit it to a new shape we're going to all do that in one in this method i i generally do stills so this method is for doing stills so first things first i'm going to drop a plane in here real quick and we really don't need you in here anymore take that over here and create primitive drop a plane in there kind of work against if you got a scene with ground you probably don't have to worry about that although it might be more convenient to do your d4 simulation in a scene by itself and then bring it into your your bigger scene so that might be something you want to do so what we want to do is first things first i'm going to set up my simulation settings and i don't use the default settings I don't like to start from bones from my memorized clothes. I'm going to turn that off. I do like to use the animated timeline. And I'm just going to set this to best. Um, I have not gone into in depth with these collision modes, how they work, but I'm assuming best is best. We'll keep our fingers crossed for that. All right, now that I've got my simulation set up the way I want to do it, I'm going to come down to my timeline. I'm going to add a few more frames in here. I often will do 61, but you know, I'm just going to do 40. And what I do is I will pose and shape the figure hair at frame 30. And here we start from basically a neutral um, configuration. So I'm going to just pop over here to frame 30. I'm going to come back, have a pose set up here. I'm going to just drop this onto the figure real quick. And there is my figure pose and, you know, stuff. There, there needs a little bit of improvement for the pose to start with, so we'll just do that real quick. First things first, get her up onto the ground. So, fingers touching. When I do that, so I'm actually looking under this a little easier for me to see what we're doing here. We're just going to get that right about there. Probably good. This foot needs to come down just a little bit. Just a little bit off the ground here. I'm actually just going to pin that translation, pin the rotation, and then we can just kind of drag it down a skosh, like so, just so it hits that ground plane, like that. And that's good to go. Also, another problem because of the size of the figure, this pose was just designed for a default Genesis 8 figure, so we'll have to pose this arm a little bit. That back, back a little like so. Use a little bit to the bend just to get that off the hip. I don't have to worry too much about it because I'm actually going to render my scene from here. So you're not actually seeing that. So I just want to make sure that's not pushing through the frame. So that is good there. So we're going to come back here. So there's a few things with this. So as you 
play the simulation and i'm just going to run this animation real quick you can see one of the things is the heat actually will drop through the ground plane so we're going to adjust our initial pose for that right off the bat so i'm just going to take our figure raise her up a little bit a little bit nope Try that again just so that when we run that animation it doesn't Cut through the plane. She's still cutting through, so we're going to just keep that just a hair more. Cut that again, and that's looking better. We can get there. Another thing with this pose, and you can't actually see it really well from here. Um, pretty sure it happens right about in here. That hand just clips that thigh so that'll cause so it'll plow right through those pants so we're going to want to fix that so this hand doesn't end up kind of clipping through that leg in our simulation so what we're going to do is i'm just going to take this arm and pull it forward a bit i'm going to bend it up up a bit so now when we run that simulation it will come forward and then drop down So it doesn't go through the thigh and the pants anymore so that's good there all right so those are good so now we're going to reset the figure shape and before you do that i'm going to want to make sure i have the figure memorized and i'm also just for visual purposes lining the top of her head up with my frame so i can scale her back later but before we change the figure's shape we're going to make sure she's memorized and then we're going to come in here and zero figure shape. So you're going to reset it back to the default shape, like so. Now you notice it got a little bit taller. So I actually don't want that. I kind of want her to start from a default shape, but about the same height. So I'm just going to come in here. And we're just going to scale her down just a so so that top of that head lines back up right about there. Doesn't have to be perfect. That's pretty good. So now when we run our animation. Okay, so we're going to have to reset figure shape back here. As you see, now the, let's just set the default. Come back to frame 30. Here's where that memorization comes into play. We can do this and we can restore figure shape. That'll pop back into our character shape, like so. There we go. And now, this is basically the animation we're going to do from a default position, from a default shape, into our pose with our character's morph shape turned on. Oh, and just one more thing before we simulate here. Um, we want to remove things from the simulation that don't actually need to interact. So in particular, the hair here is something I'm going to want to remove. So I'm going to select the hair. And with this hair, I have to actually select all the sub parts. So if I just do Control X, expand that, select all of this. Come over here, grab all of those. We're going to come down here. And we're going to turn off the visibility in the simulation for just the hair so they don't so the hair won't interact with anything else in the simulation okay so now with that done we are ready to run the simulation there we go and it seems to have settled so i'm just going to go ahead and cancel the rest of this I don't need to go all the way to the end. Just add these extra frames just to give it a little bit of a chance to settle out. And pretty happy that we're getting a little bit of poke through here in the legs just because of the way the cloth is holding on top of itself. Um, you can just hide the legs from when we do the render later. We can't even see that from the front. Okay. 
camera back to where it was. And that's pretty much it. So now I'm done and I'm ready to render this. That's another another thing altogether. Also, setting up clothes is a separate video. I'll do something on that too. So anyhow, thanks for uh, joining us and I hope you have a good day.